I have before us displayed the complete FTP manager running against the Enterprise Edition of Complete FTP. The Enterprise Edition is the highest level edition of Complete FTP that has features over and above those of the Professional and Standard Editions. I'll start off by looking at the overview. The overview is common to all editions, but we can see that there's something called Sites and something called Servers that doesn't appear in the lower editions. I'll start with Sites. A site is a group of related protocols. Each instance of Complete FTP Server actually has two sites. It has what's called the administration site, which is listening on a special port number for the Complete FTP Manager to connect, and by default it connects users using SFTP, but also has what's called the default site. And the default site supports SFTP, FTP, uh, SCP, and they're all running on the default port numbers that you would expect these servers to run on. Port 22 for SFTP and SSH, port 21 for FTP, port 80 for HTTP, port 443 for HTTPS. But what you can do is add additional sites. So if you want to also run, say, HTTP or FTP, or indeed all the protocols that are available on a different set of port numbers, you can go down to the Add Site button and you can see that a new site is being added. It generates new SSH key pairs, it generates a new server certificate for SSL, all the extra configuration that's required. If I apply the changes, we now have a new site. I'll look a little bit later on in the Sites tab to see the difference between the new site and the default site. That's something that's only supported in the Enterprise Edition. Where you might use this is perhaps you might have you want to have a separation of concerns. So you might want to, for your internal users, be able to access FTP and SFTP on the standard port numbers, but you might present the new site via your firewall and have only those ports accessible to users outside your organization. So you have a separation of concerns there. So when someone FTPs on port 22 from outside your organization, the firewall might map that port 22 to port 1022 on your server box and then that user will actually be connecting to the second site, not the default site that all the internal users use. Well that's sites. Servers is another important feature of the Enterprise Edition. Enterprise Edition supports what we call complete FTP clustering. And that means you can run several instances of complete FTP on different machines and have the configuration controlled by one primary server. This one here is marked as primary. So if I want to add another server, I would go add server and it'll bring up a little dialog for the IP address of the server, the admin port, which by default is 14983, and the credentials to be used. I don't actually have another server set up right now because I'm just doing an overview, but that's how you would add a server. And then once that's done, you would see a second server listed in this pane. And whenever I make a change to the primary server, those changes would be propagated to the secondary server. Now, it's important to note that this doesn't provide load balancing for an external client coming in. It doesn't load balance between the two servers. You need an external load balancer for that, and it doesn't synchronize the file system itself, only the complete FTP configuration. For many people this is enough, because you might have your secondary server just sitting there not actually being used, and it's for disaster recovery. So you make changes on the primary, they're propagated to the secondary, but people only access the primary. However, if the primary goes down, then you can get your DNS to automatically direct people to the secondary, which is already set up and in sync with the primary.
another use for clustering, which is getting more common, is running your server instances on, instances on Amazon AWS, Amazon Web Services. So you can easily run up multiple instances of complete FTP on Amazon. Now Amazon has something that's called the Elastic Load Balancer. And so they provide load balancing services as part, as part of uh, their setup. So you can very easily configure load balancing. And they're also now providing a form of elastic uh, synchronization services. So you will be able to, through Amazon, load balance and file synchronize in conjunction with using the Enterprise Editions clustering, which is an exciting development. I'll move on to have a look at the different tabs for these uh, features. The servers, it just lists a few details about the servers, you know, the server sites that are supported on this server and so on. There's a few different bits of information there. Now the sites one is probably the most interesting one for multiple sites. Here we are on the default site and if we look we can see that the default ports are port 21 and port 990 for implicit FTPS. They're, they're standard ports. We also have the new site here. And if I click on the new site, we can see that we now have got 1021, 1990. And so we're also listening on these port numbers for these protocols. And we could add a third and fourth and fifth site if that was required. Very easy to delete the site, go down and remove. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. Apply the changes and those listeners are shut down and we're back to normal. In users, same screen as before for the other editions, but in the general user settings, we have what's called the gateway. And the gateway is a feature that will be explored further in a different video, but suffice it to say the gateway allows you to use complete FTP as a proxy to other servers. If you have a legacy server that only supports FTP, you can put complete FTP in front of it to secure access to that server. So clients log into complete FTP and all requests are proxied to your legacy server. And from client to complete FTP can be done by SFTP. So the client doesn't even know that the legacy server doesn't support SFTP. So that's a very useful feature for people who have extensive legacy servers that still need supporting. Uh, I've covered groups and events in the professional edition. Let me just quickly look at extensions. Extensions are interesting because what they allow you to do is customize the behavior of complete FTP. You can write all kinds of extensions in .NET, different kinds of authentication extensions, so you can authenticate differently. You can write your own file system and plug it in. You can do all sorts of uh, different things, even your own permissioning, custom commands that can be called externally, and so on. We'll have a, a future video that will explore the extensions in more detail. Uh, monitoring is similar to the professional edition and so is the licensing tab. So that gives you an overview of the enterprise edition of complete FTP. Most important things to note that are different are multiple sites, clustering and on the extension side extensive customization of complete FTP and each of these will be explored further in different videos.